It's very difficult to make a review on a game that's pre-installed on every PlayStation 5 and you're going to review that game several years after it launched because you didn't get a PlayStation 5 on launch. But Astro's Playroom has snuck its way into my heart in a very particular way and so whilst I'm going to say this game is still my favourite experience on PlayStation 5, uh, despite having my PS5 now for almost a year, and it still comes across as one of my favourite platformers that I've played in recent memory and it's by far the best way to experience the DualSense controller. Nothing else on the console comes even close to showcasing what that controller can do. There's a very specific thing I want to talk about with Astro's Playroom and it's around the gaming industry tipping its hat and remembering the generations and the games and the platforms and the environments and the heritage that the industry is creating and remembering it shouldn't be just tossed away and discarded or brought back for very thin vanity projects like TV and movies do at the moment where, oh, it's a supernatural thing, but it's set in the 80s, so therefore now it's cool and hip. And, oh, aren't we so nostalgic for that? I think the gaming industry should and couldn't ought to do better than that. And it starts off with game preservation. The reason that I want to kind of pair this up with Astro's Playroom is I don't necessarily come to PlayStation and, and Sony, and I've been with Sony since PlayStation 1 all the way through. It's been my main console of choice, largely because where I have a PC as well, Xbox pretty much becomes redundant because I'll just buy everything for PC. And I never was a Nintendo-y person, so I've never had the opportunity to really dive into that era of, or, or that kind of segment of gaming, to be fair. So it's always for me been PlayStation and PC to cover most of my bases. But as you move through the generations, what Astro Playroom does so well is to kind of go back in time and remember all of the different critical games and nuances and tips of the hats to all the, the little robots that are playing out scenes of games that I personally still have but I feel like the games companies, the developers, the platform owners have just tossed aside because they're busy trying to make the next buck and there needs to be much more of a conscious effort for game preservation, digital preservation as a whole but also looking after the generations that have come before the thing that kind of stood out for me is that where you go through the PlayStation 1 levels and you've got obviously nods to Tomb Raider, there's Cooler World in there, you've got Abe and all kinds of like fantastic things, the original Metal Gear for example. Then you go into the PlayStation 2 era, you've got your Final Fantasy Tens, you've got like I could go on and on and on and on and on across all of the different uh, platforms as you go. But how many of those are easily accessible and allow gamers to really go back in time and remember the nostalgia and the roots but see it and carry it with them and i think that's very few people i've never got rid of a console i still have all of my consoles they all still work some of them are a little bit dog-eared and i've kept every single game that i've bought as well and so I feel like I'm in a very lucky and privileged position, but I'm always worried about there's going to be some times when my PS1 and my PS2 conk conk out. I've got a ZX Spectrum with cassette tapes on, and at some point those cassettes are going to fail because of the technology. And it worries me that we're just losing all of the roots of where we've come from from a, from a gaming perspective remember i'm i'm an old one i'm 39 i've been gaming since i was like a wee toddler it's always been a part of my life and so i don't i, I treasure all of those memories as i kind of go through gaming and astro's playroom was able to tap into that for me and it felt like the first time in a very long time that there was a true celebration and almost like a remember this, remember that, remember so on and so on and so forth as you go through it, tipping the hats to some very big names, but also some of the lesser known stuff out there are too, that you'd almost call like your cult classics. And I've not seen another game company do that in quite this way. And that's why Astro's Playroom really touched a particular place in my kind of heart and mind that made me think, cool, 
So what are we going to do about game preservation? Are you going to allow backwards compatibility? Could you be able to put in a PS3 BIOS so that all of my disc-based PS3 games can come across? What's really interesting is that despite doing all of this, Sony is probably the worst offender potentially of keeping older generations back. We know that PS1 and PS2 games can be bought in and bought and paid for on the store. I think it's really interesting that some of the PSP games that have come out that can now be played on PS5, um, one of the Loco Roco ones uh, dropped not too long ago. I bought that digitally for the PSP and it was like, oh, cross buy from PSP to PS5. And that is just a golden dream because I feel like it allows you to become a customer and I'm not stupid. I know that they're all there getting their money and and it's all about that bottom line at the end of the day as it is for all corporate businesses. But it drives that better illusion of being a family or, or being part of a collective that you're looked after and you're looking after the area of like your entertainment that you enjoy. I'm not really quite sure what I'm getting at, but. I wished that the game industry didn't just turf things aside because after six months, you know what, player numbers are low. So this online only game that's still a single player game, but it requires an online connection, is now not going to be available to you. It then doubles down to the whole where you're buying stuff digitally and remotely, that it's a license, not the actual game that you have. And it's very difficult to get things physically these days, particularly if you aren't one of the big players. And since I'm one of the gamers that enjoys the smaller indie and niche titles, I'm well aware that as services shut down, again, we're going to lose all of this game preservation as we go. And... I've still got Desera, which was that kind of indie version of Steam in the back of my head. I spent a lot of money on that platform and I lost an awful lot of my games that I've never been able to get back. And when you hear of things like the Vita store is now closed and I see sometimes people are like, that game won't download anymore. And I'm like, oh, I've not got that on the most recent memory card. And so I'm trying to get memory cards to back stuff up. It's such a difficult time to be a gamer who is interested and wants to be part of like gate not gatekeeping the legacy but taking care of the legacy of the gaming industry and the industry itself doesn't seem to be bothered until it's time to do a remaster and a remake and probably sometimes do it worse <laughs> or not do it justice and yeah I just wanted to talk about that, really. I don't think this review or chat really has a specific point. It's just, it's really dawning on me that it's up to us as gamers because the industry can't look after itself. Um, it doesn't want to. It's not capable to. It's too busy chasing the dime and the dollar and the pound. And that's the sad reality of our lives and the world at the moment. So, yeah, I just... Astro's Playroom really tapped into something for me that just made me go, you've done this game, it absolutely lands every beat, not just in terms of the gameplay, but that kind of emotional pull of look at how much of a brand and a platform and a legacy that we've bought. And then they've not followed through with the actual, and I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, and here is our PS1 collection available for everyone. Uh, and I appreciate that there's an awful lot of license issues, companies go under, all of that kind of stuff. There's a lot that gets in the way, but you would hope that in the future the gaming industry can do a lot more to preserve its legacy, not just for the gamers of the, that are gaming now, but so that the gamers in the future can see exactly where this fantastic world of digital entertainment came from. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. 
Your support makes all the difference, and in return, you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.